I came across another good question recently. How to add teeth to the inside of an irregular curve without drawing each individual tooth. That can be useful for any number of reasons. Sometimes teeth of small cones are added to the inside surface of a curve to give a little bit of extra grip, for example. There are videos out there that give the idea in broad strokes, but I wanted to do something very specific to this case. Starting in the part workbench, I already have a shape drawn. It's just two beast lines roughly the same shape, side by side, connected at the ends with line segments, then extruded 10 millimeters. First, I'm going to need a single tooth at one end of the curved shape. Select the top face of the hook and create a new sketch mapped on the plane face. Bring in the inner edge of the hook as external geometry. Note that if you're using the development version like I am, the external geometry may have been brought in as real geometry but we really just want a reference. If that's happened, select it and toggle it to construction geometry. Select the polyline tool and draw a triangle with one corner coincident with the end of the external geometry. The other vertex of the base should be point on line with the external geometry. Don't forget to close off the base. The external geometry is just the reference line. Select the two sides of the triangle and set an equals constraint to make it isosceles. Now I'll set the base of the tooth to 3 millimeters. You can use any size you want there within reason, but it's important to constrain it to an exact size, as you'll see later. The tooth is just a little bit too tall. I'll shrink it down a bit and close the sketch. With the sketch selected, extrude it 10 millimeters. It's gone the wrong way, so I'll set reverse to true in the data pane. That looks about right. Now we just need to repeat that tooth all the way around the inside curve. Go to the Lattice 2 workbench. In the menu, go to Lattice 2, Lattice Placement, Single Placement, Custom, and just leave it where it falls. Now into the Draft workbench. Press G and then R to hide the draft plane. Select the lattice 2 placement, then the upper inner edge of the hook, the same edge as the tooth is anchored on. Go to Modification, Array Tools, Pathlink Array. That's looking promising. Select the path array and increase the count to 8. One problem is the placements have a fixed orientation in the X direction. We need them to have a radial alignment so the teeth will all point inward. Select the path array and in the data pane under alignment set align to true. It's a little hard to make out, but looking closely they are now aligned tangent to the curve. That'll be fine. Back to the Lattice 2 workbench. If this is something you do frequently, it might be worth making a custom toolbar in the Lattice 2 workbench with the Draft Pathlink Array tool in it. The Pathlink Array is nice, but we really need a Lattice 2 Array. Select the Path Array and go to Lattice 2, Array from Shape, Array from Shape, Internal Placements. Now to place the teeth, select the Extrude for the tooth, the Array from the Path Array, and Populate Array with Copies. That result looks insane. Fortunately, it's easily fixed. Select the Populated Array, and in the data pane towards the bottom, we have a field Referencing. It defaults to Referencing the Origin. Change that to First Item. Much better. The problem was that it was looking at the first tooth as reference from the origin of the array, so the subsequent placements all had an offset. By changing the referencing to the first item itself, all of the subsequent placements fall where we might expect them to. It's looking good, but the final tooth is actually hanging off the end of the curve rather than being on the hook. Something to keep in mind here. 
although the latest two array is the one that actually created the copies. That array is driven by the path array that it was created from. So select the path array and come down to spacing and we have end offset. Set that to 3 millimeters, the same as the constrained length of the base of the tooth. That's brought it neatly into position. Back to the part workbench to finish it up. The teeth are a bit sparse. I want them fully packed side by side. I could just guess at the count and keep guessing until it looks about right, but there's an easier way. Select that inside curve and activate Geometry Info. That tool actually comes from the Curves Workbench, but I brought it into the Part Workbench with a custom toolbar. When activated, information about the selected object, in this case the inside curve, is displayed in black text in the upper left-hand corner of the workspace. It can be a little hard to read, but it's very useful. Of most interest is the length field. This gives me the equivalent linear length of the curve. Divide length by the width of each tooth, and we have the number of teeth required to fully pack the curve. So select the path array and come down to the count. I wanted to just enter the length divided by 3, but unfortunately, for some reason, the count field is not allowing me to use expressions. So pop open a handy dandy calculator and enter 122 over 3, giving me 40 and 2 thirds. I'll round that down to 40 so that there's just a little bit of space between teeth. If instead you prefer they overlap slightly, round it up to 41. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.